This is the main column of the drill press. I'm using an industrial cleaner to help remove the worst of the gunk. Now that the column is clean, I want to try and texture the surface. The end goal is a satin finish. I start with an orbital sander, 120 grit followed by 240. And then a scotch bright wheel. There are two types of finishes that can be a hurdle for the home workshop, chrome and black oxide. It is possible to properly redo both at home with the right equipment and chemicals, but instead I'm going to show a couple of ways to near enough replicate both surfaces cheaply and easily. First up, black oxide. These parts originally were dipped in hot baths of chemicals which convert the surface of the steel to a porous black magnetite. The parts were then dipped in oil, and that is the end result, a black oxide finish, just like you see on impact sockets. That's not what we're going to do here. We're going to blue the part instead. It's pretty much the same process, the only difference being the type of chemical used for the conversion, which results in a slightly different surface finish. Also, in this case, we're using a cold blue. You can buy a little bottle of this stuff from anywhere that sells firearms. It costs about $15. It's easy to use and for this type of application, it's good enough. I recommend leaving as much of the original finish in place as possible, while still getting the part as clean as you can. In this case, I removed nearly all of the finish, but it's better not to if you can avoid it. It's also better to do one or two pieces at a time and not the whole lot like I've done here because the dry oxide surface deteriorates quickly. At this point the surface looks horrible and patchy, but don't panic. Once the parts are oiled and wiped down, the finish looks much better. Maybe not as good as properly refinishing them with black oxide, but they'll look great when they're back on the machine. Next up, chrome. We're going to go through a couple of budget re-chroming options. This is probably the worst of the handles, beaten up and one end has snapped off and been replaced with a bolt. I'm fine with the brazed on bolt, but the brazing is slumped below the surface. So my game plan is to either glue on some more brazing to build it up, or just remove it and re-weld it with the MIG. I'm pretty sure the old brazing is just going to drop off, and I'm not going to try to stop it. But if I can get away with just adding more brazing, since we have the torch out anyway, then great.
Electroplating hides nothing, so the part was finished with a scotch bright wheel and then a buffing wheel. The other handles were in better condition, just rusty and old, so I prepared them for plating in much the same way, just files and buffing. For this project, I'm not worried about getting back to perfect machine surfaces everywhere. So for example, these handles will finish up smooth, shiny and clean, but still showing a few underlying dents and nicks. Now for the plating itself. All of the handles were done in the same way, but I'll mostly show the welded bolt handle since it gets a little more interesting later on. This is Caswell's brush on copy chrome solution. It's basically cobalt. The end result does look like chrome though. However, I don't like the brush on part, but this little kit only cost me about $40, whereas the smallest copy chrome immersion kit costs about $250 US dollars plus shipping. So, after running over the whole thing with the copy chrome solution, I notice a small defect most likely a spot where the base metal wasn't perfectly clean. It would be easy enough to clean this patch up and replate the little spot, but instead, for no good reason, let's do it a different way. This is my nickel plating setup. I'm going to plate the whole piece in nickel, a good thick plate, and then just skim over the top with the brush on copy chrome. The kit consists of a jar of home-brewed nickel sulphate, an old cell phone charger, plus the nickel anode and a couple of alligator clips. In addition to a thorough clean, we're also going to acid dip the part. That will get rid of any grease and also chemically etch the surface. This is hydrochloric acid, mixed about 50-50 with water. I mix it with water only to save acid. I probably dunked this for about one minute. From the acid, the part needs to go straight into clean water. Once it's been in the acid, any exposed steel will start to flash over with rust almost instantly. It's a pretty simple setup, positive on the anode and negative on the piece you want to plate. And bubbles. After a bit of troubleshooting, it turns out that my piece of copper wire is insulated. That's why nothing was happening. Let's try that again. I leave parts in for about 20 minutes on average. This piece is slightly larger than average, so I went for 30. But about 20 minutes seems to work fine for this setup. Now that we have a good thick nickel base, I can quickly glide over the part with the copy chrome again without much concern for coverage. The last piece of the puzzle is this aluminium plate. Nothing fancy here, just filed smooth and polished.
At this point, I decided to skim the faces on the lathe. I know you guys like some lathe action, so I recorded plenty, but forgot to turn the mic on for most of it. So here is a rapid, silent montage of useless footage. In the next episode, we'll start putting some of the big bits back together. Can't wait. I haven't been this excited since K-Ruck hit 100k. Hey.